In today's video, I'm going to teach you two different styles of outline glow effects inside the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So, let's get into it. All right, here I am on the edit page of DaVinci Resolve, and I have this clip of Dazai that's about one second long. I've already converted it into a compound clip, so make sure to do that first for your video. Once you're done, click on the Fusion page icon to open it. Once you're in Fusion, you'll notice two nodes named Media In and Media Out. First things first, we need to adjust the workspace to work comfortably. Press and hold the middle mouse button to drag the nodes to the center of the view. Next, go to the top right corner of the viewer and click on the rectangle box to switch into single view mode. All right, now let's get into the effect. First, we'll create a basic setup to generate the outline and glow. Then we'll create both types of animation from that setup, which is actually quite easy. To start, click on the media in node and press shift plus space to open the tool finder. Search for the node called edge detect, this one over here, select it and click on add button. Once added, You'll notice that the edges are visible, but we have a few issues. If you notice, the edges have different colors. We need to fix that, otherwise, it will mess up our primary color. To fix this, go to the inspector and look for the mode option, which is currently set to RGB. Click here, and from the options choose grayscale, and it will convert the edges into black and white. You'll also see a new menu where we can choose our desired color. We'll handle that later. For now, let's make the edges a bit brighter. To do this, go to the detection menu where we can adjust brightness and gamma. First, increase the brightness by clicking and dragging the slider to the right. Keep an eye on the viewer. You'll see the edges getting brighter. You can keep dragging to find the proper value, but I'll go to the box on right. Then double click and type four since this value works well. Now the edges are brighter and more clear, but we've also revealed some extra details in the background. To fix that, slightly increase the gamma. Let's try around 1.5. That's looking good. Now if you notice, the edges are a bit too sharp. It's not a big deal, but let's smooth them out a little. To do that, we'll add a slight blur. In the right box, type 0.2, and that's it. Now it's looking just right. All right. Now let's add the color. In the mode section, you'll see edge color. And just after that, you will see a mini arrow. Click on it to open the color space. On the right side of it, you will see color slider. By moving it up and down, you can change the color to your liking. You might want to choose a color that fits the mood of your edit. For me, I'm going with this orange yellowish color, which looks quite good on Dazai. To apply the color, just click here and to change its saturation, drag this point to the top right corner. Okay, it's looking quite good. Now let's add the glow to complete the neon effect. Select the edge detect node and press shift plus space to open the tool finder. Now search for soft glow, select it, and then click the add button. By default, the glow is too strong and looks a bit off, so let's adjust it step by step. Go to the inspector, and the first thing we're going to change is the gain. On the right side of the box, change the value to 1. This will reduce the intensity of the glow. Now we want to adjust the glow size to increase its range. Double click on the glow size box and change the value to 20. Keep an eye on the viewer. You'll notice the glow looks softer and more balanced around the edges now. The edges are looking good but we can make it even better by adding a broader glow effect to the entire clip. To do that, select the soft glow node, then press Ctrl plus C to copy it. Now, with the node still selected, press Ctrl plus V to paste it, creating another soft glow node with the same settings. This second glow will help cover the whole clip. Now to make sure this second glow affects the entire clip, go to the inspector and change the glow size value to 50. This will give you a larger, softer glow that wraps around the whole clip, creating a beautiful neon effect. And that's it. Now it's looking amazing. Keep in mind, these values worked well for my clip, but you may need to tweak them based on your clip. So, play around with the settings until it looks just right for your video. Alright, now we will separate the outline glow from our main clip 
so that we can animate the neon glow independently without affecting the main clip. Currently, the neon outline is connected to our main clip, so if we animate the neon outline size, it will also change the size of the clip, which isn't ideal for our animation style. But don't worry if this sounds confusing, just follow along, and it will make sense. First, click on the media in node, which is our main clip, and press Ctrl plus C to copy it. Now move the cursor just below the media in node, and click once to cancel the selection. Then press Ctrl plus V to paste the node. Now we have a copy of our main clip separated from the effect nodes. Next we need to connect this new node to the media out, but before that, let's rename it for clarity. With the node selected, press F2, and rename it as BG, background. Now move the cursor over the line connecting the nodes just before the media out node. When the line turns yellow and blue, click once to disconnect it. Now move the media out node little below to align it with BG node. Take the output of the BG node and connect it to the yellow input of the media out node. You'll now see our main clip without any effects and we still have the nodes with the glow effect separated. Next, let's connect the outline glow effect on top of the BG node to apply the effect. Take the output of the soft glow node and connect it to the output of the BG node. This will automatically connect via a merge node, combining both layers. With that, our basic setup is done, and now we can create both types of animations from here. Let's start with the one-sided animation first. This animation is actually quite easy. First, click on the merge node, then add a polygon mask to it. You'll notice that everything disappears. That's because we haven't defined any masked area yet, but we'll do that now. Before we start, let's rearrange the polygon node. Place it at the bottom for better organization. With the polygon node selected, go to the viewer. Hold control and scroll with the mouse wheel to zoom out, so we can see all sides of the clip properly. Now we'll create a mask on one side of the clip. Move your cursor to the top of the frame. Make sure you're at the center of the viewer. Press shift and left click to add a point. Then move the cursor to the bottom and click again to create a straight line. Now release the shift key and add the rest of the points one by one. Make sure to connect the last point with the first one to close the mask. Otherwise, it won't appear. Now we've successfully masked out half of the effect, but you may notice a sharp edge in the middle. We need to smooth that out. To fix this, go to the inspector and look for the soft edge option. Drag the slider all the way to the right to soften the edge, and that's it. Now everything looks smooth and balanced. All right, let's move on to animating it. Move your playback head to frame zero, if it's not already there. Then go to the inspector and add a keyframe for border width. Move the slider to the left to decrease the width. Now even after moving it all the way to the left, you'll notice that the effect is still visible. We need to decrease it even more, so click on the box on the right, then press the up arrow on your keyboard to decrease the value manually. Keep pressing until the outline disappears. I found that minus 0.5 works well. There may still be a small glow left, but don't worry. We'll adjust its opacity next. To animate the opacity, we'll add a keyframe for level. This controls the opacity for masks. Decrease the level value to zero. Now move the playback head to the middle of your clip. For me, it's frame 16, but this might be different for you. At this point, change the level value to one to make the outline appear. Now let's change the border width value back to zero. All right, now let's preview the animation to see if it's working or not. As you can see, it's looking good. When the animation starts, there's nothing visible, but as it progresses, the glowing outline gradually appears. However, to make the animation smoother, we'll tweak it further. Go to the top right corner and click on the spline icon to open the spline editor. Inside the spline editor on the left side, you'll see all the nodes that have keyframes. However, if you don't see anything on the graph on the right side, it's because none of these nodes are activated. We'll enable them one by one to view and edit the keyframes. 
Start by ticking the box next to level to select it. Now even after activating it, nothing is visible. To view them we need to make the keyframes fit with graph properly. Move over to the right and click on the zoom to fit button. Now you'll see the entire keyframe line displayed correctly within the graph. Next click and drag from one corner to another to select the keyframes on the graph. Once they are selected, press S on your keyboard. This will activate the Bezier handles. Click and drag the bottom Bezier handle as shown to adjust the curve. When you're done, deselect it by clicking on the level box again. Now we'll repeat the same process for border width. Tick the box next to border width. Click the zoom to fit button to ensure the keyframes are fully visible and select the keyframes. Press S on the keyboard to enable the Bezier handles, then adjust the bottom handle to create a similar smooth curve as before. Once everything is adjusted, close the spline editor and let's preview the animation again. It looks amazing now. The glowing outline animates smoothly, giving us a professional looking effect. This is how you create the first animation using one mask node. All right. Now that we've completed the first animation, let's move on to the second one. But before we move on, let me show you how to add color variations to the edges. This is a great way to add some dynamic contrast to different parts of your clip. To do this, we'll use a color corrector node. First, I'm going to move these two nodes a little to make some space. Then click on the Edge Detect node and add a color corrector node. With the color corrector node selected, Go to the inspector and move around the color wheel to change the color. For this example, I'm going to choose a reddish tone. Now you'll notice it's affecting the entire clip, but I only want it to affect a specific part. To do that, we need to add a mask. With the color corrector node selected, add a polygon mask. Rearrange it as needed and simply mask out the area you want to apply the color correction to. In this case, let's mask the character's eye. Now you'll see the reddish tone is applied to the selected area. To fix the sharp edges of the mask, go to the inspector and increase the soft edge value a little bit. You can now see that the character's eye looks a little more reddish compared to the rest of the edges. Let's add another mask. Click on the polygon node and add another polygon mask. Rearrange the nodes as needed. This time, let's mask out the side hair of the character. Once again, Increase the soft edge to make it blend smoothly, and that's it. This technique is totally flexible, and if you play the animation, you'll see that it animates along with the rest of the effect. If you want more color variations, just repeat the same process for other parts of the clip. Alright, now that we've added some color variations, let's move on to the second animation. Alright, so here I am back at our basic setup. I've deleted the mask that contains the first animation, as well as the color corrector and its masks, since this second animation doesn't require them. Now that we've cleaned everything up, let's continue with the next steps. The first thing we need to do is remove the dark areas from the outline effect since for this animation, we only need the glowing outline. To achieve this, we need to change the apply mode. So, click on the merge node, go to the inspector, and you'll see the apply mode option. It's currently set to normal. Click on that, and from the options, choose screen. Now if you notice, the edges have become less clear, and the entire clip looks a bit too bright. But don't worry, that's how this effect works. Once we start animating, you'll see that it looks just fine. Next we need to find a frame where your character makes a slight movement, which will be the key point of this animation. Move your playback head and find the frame where your character moves a little. For me, somewhere between frame 4 to 6 looks good. In these frames, Dazai's head moves slightly, and that's where I want the animation to start. You can also use the left and right arrow keys to move frame by frame, which is helpful in finding the exact frame you want. I think I'll go with frame 4 for this clip, but make sure you find the right frame for your own clip. Once you've done that, we can move on to the next step. Alright, while staying on that frame, make sure the merge node is selected. Then go to the inspector 
And the first thing we need to animate is the size. Add a keyframe for size, then double click on the box and change the value to 1.01. .01. This will make the outline slightly bigger than the character. If it doesn't look quite right, you can try 1.02 for a larger outline. Now we also need to animate the opacity, so we'll animate the blend. Add a keyframe for blend. Once that's done, go back one frame from the current frame. Here, you can see your current frame, which is frame 3 for me. On this frame, change the blend value to 0. What this will do is make sure that before frame 3, there will be no outline visible. And as soon as we move to frame 4, the outline will appear. Just as you can see on screen, perfect. Now move to the last frame of your composition. First, we'll change the size. Double click on the box and change the value to 1.2. This value works fine. As you can see, the outline has become much bigger and it's appearing nicely. Now change the blend value to zero and we're done with the basic animation. Let's play it and see how it looks. As you can see, at the start, there's nothing. Then as we cross frame 3, the outline appears, it gets bigger as we move forward, and finally, it fades out in the end. It's looking pretty good so far. However, the animation is linear throughout the clip, so let's adjust that to make it smoother. Go to the top right corner and open the spline tab. This time, select both blend and size together. Then on the right side, Click on the Zoom to Fit button, and you'll see the graphs. The white graph represents the blend, and it has three keyframes. When we're selecting keyframes, we need to be careful not to select the first keyframe because we want it to stay linear. To select the correct keyframes, click on the top right side of the graph and drag diagonally to the bottom left side. Keep an eye on the graph to ensure that only the second and third keyframes are selected. Once they are selected, release the mouse button. This is how it should look. Now right-click on the empty area of the graph, and the menu will appear. Find the option Ease, and from there, choose Out Cubic. Once you do this, you'll have a curve that looks like this. Now let's close the Spline tab and preview the animation again to see the changes. Compared to before, this is looking much more smoother and faster. And with that, we're done with the second part of the animation. All right, now let's head back to the edit page and preview both animations together. As you can see, both of our animations have turned out really well. One thing to keep in mind is that the values I used worked well for my clip, but if you're not getting the same results, don't hesitate to try out different values to suit your own footage. If you need any help with this tutorial, feel free to drop a comment you can also leave a comment just to help me out and boost the video's reach. Don't forget to give this video a like and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'll see you in the next one. In the meantime, check out my other videos related to this topic.